Welcome to 2Fab. I'm Ross McDonough and I am here with the legendary Hollywood medium himself, the fabulous Tyler Henry. Hello. Tyler, <laughs> thank you very much for coming in here today. Of first question. Do you know already what my first question is going to be? <laughs> I'm sensing a good question, so I feel like this is a good start. You got it. Yeah. He's right. <laughs> of course, my first question has to be about the Jordan Woods, Kylie Jenner, Tristan Thompson, Khloe Kardashian, love, quadrilateral, I was say, Pentagon, Pentagon, whatever shape that something. is. For the people who don't know, tell them what you called earlier. Well, okay, so I can't take credit for the prediction itself, but when I sat with Chloe, I definitely saw the decline of her relationship. I felt like distance was gonna be a factor, and there were a number of validations that ended up being true in hindsight, now that we know about the Jordan Woods situation. But I didn't see her specifically, so I can't <laughs> take credit for that one. Well, I think you're just being modest, because <laughs> didn't you say that you saw somebody trying to get with a sister and then trying to get with another sister? And as we all know, Kylie and Jordan consider each other sisters. That's right. So I'm gonna chalk that one up to you well, then. Well, well, I'll let you do it. <laughs> you say what you want, I'm giving you credit. So are you ever like scared of ghosts? You know people, when they have these experiences, like sure. they freak out. Have you ever like been in a situation where you're like, get me the fuck out of here, like this is freaky stuff, or are you just so used to it? There was actually one time, funny that you say that, uh, at a burn unit, I was at a hospital, and my mom was visiting a family friend, and I remember I went to the top floor, and we got in the elevator, and I started having a panic attack. And I was walking down the hall, and right as I passed where these two halls met, as I walked and stepped forward, there was this person, and they turned the corner, and I ran right into them, and my chest hit their chest. But I realized when, I, when the corner was turned that there was not an actual person. It was like a part of a person. And I had physically ran into someone that wasn't there. Oh my god. And I freaked out, got in the elevator, like ran. And, wow. And that's the only time that I can think of where that's happened. Even the Hollywood medium gets freaked out. Yes. That's good to know. You mentioned skeptics earlier, obviously most recently. Uh, John Oliver, you've probably seen, came out during the week and, and had a go at, at all mediums. Yes. Um, what do, you, what do you say to skeptics? Yeah, I understand skepticism. I think skepticism is something to be embraced. I think we should question every belief we have. In my opinion, I think there's a difference between skepticism and cynicism. I tend to try to avoid cynicism because I feel like it can sometimes err on the side of ignorance by just disregarding something without actually seeing it or experiencing it firsthand. Right. Now, I totally understand there's people who are not into it, but with the people that I do read and the skeptics that I do read, Dr. Drew, Tom Arnold, a whole bunch of them this season, um, I really have to be specific and focus on validations. And these validations have to be things that aren't researchable, aren't Googleable. Right. John Oliver's claim is that in reading Matt Lauer, there was information about his right. father on the internet. Of course, Matt Lauer's public figure. Right. <laughs> it was the information Matt Lauer heard that wasn't public knowledge that, in my opinion, is what really got him emotionally and allowed him to have such a cathartic experience. Right. It's not the Googleable stuff that right. people are getting emotional. At. And as you say, you don't know who you're reading. Exactly. You read them. And are there, would you say, charlatans out there. Absolutely, yeah. 100%. And I think if you're going to go to a medium, go to a medium as a skeptic. And this is a medium telling you this. Right, right. <laughs> go, because if, if someone is a medium and they're legit, they're not going to be shocked by skepticism. They're not going to be taken aback or intimidated by skepticism, right. I think, if you're legit. So um, I would say if you're going to see a medium, go give as little information about yourself as possible and let the medium do the talking. Go to voice. And are you, uh, Tola, are you uh, a man of faith yourself? Do you believe in God? I believe, I have. I always am a man of trust. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, a deep sense of trust in the universe and something greater. Um, you know, I grew up in a very faith-based home, a faith-based belief system, and as time went on and I started having my own experiences, I then kind of had to rely on them. So I always say it's kind of been more of a trust uh, that I've acquired through time. And right. Kind of so do you describe yourself as, the, do you follow a denomination? Are you? I don't. So right. non-denominational, I, I don't necessarily, you know, attribute my beliefs to one particular religion. I grew up Presbyterian. Right. Um, so, yeah. But as time's gone on, I think that, you know, religions, I, I liken them to kind of like languages. Our religion is very cultural. It has a lot to do with where we're born on this planet. It can really impact our religious beliefs. So I think, uh, it's kind of like a cultural thing, a unique language that we can have to communicate with a higher power. Right. And um, that's how I do religion. So would you describe your power then as divine? Do you think it was gifted to you by a higher power? I think it's, yeah, I would say that. Right. I think, But I also think that the ability to play basketball really well or to paint a pretty picture, those are all talents and, and gifts, if you'd like to call them, from something right. greater or something that I think we're all a part of. Right. And um, why do you think you were given this gift specifically? I think everybody has the ability to connect. I just think really? that, yeah, some people do it more than others. And I think in my case, I grew up as an only child, so I spent a lot of time alone. And being that that was the case, I didn't really have a lot of people to kind of shut down my imagination. I know it sounds strange, right. but I, growing up, I just kind of lived in my own world. And so when I started having these premonitions and these feelings, I felt more comfortable to share them. Whereas most people, I think, would, would not feel that comfortable. Right. Would, uh, Hold it back. Does it frustrate you at all that so many people, billions of people, have a blind faith in a religion, in 
let's say, invisible gods, you know what I mean? They don't, they've never seen Jesus, they've never met him, or, you know, whatever god they believe in, Buddha, Muhammad, whatever. Does it frustrate you that people blindly believe in something they've never seen, yet when you are doing something physical in front of them, that you, you hit a certain level of skepticism? Why do you think that is? Well, I think that when it comes to spirituality, just generally, people do feel called to something in most cases, I think, whether it's Christianity or agnosticism. I think a lot of people, even if they don't claim to know what it is, they feel that there is or could be something. Right. I'd say with what I do, it is very demonstrative-based. It's very experience-based. So as you follow religion, you go to church and you're told to believe something, versus what I do is kind of you sit down and you see demonstrations of validation right. and connection. Um, I think with that comes an inherent skepticism, more than even religion faces, because right of that kind of demonstrative nature of this um, ability. But right. I would say that for the people that are into it and the people that can benefit from it and have an open mind, it can be very healing and comforting for people's greater spirituality. Right. So. Um, well, tell me a little bit about the upcoming season then. You excited yes. about that? I am, yep. Season four is coming on up and we have Sofia Vergara, Howie Mandel, uh, Macklemore, uh, so many celebrities this season that have received readings. And most interesting to me has actually been that I got a brain scan done this season during a reading. Really? This was conducted by Dr. Drew and a scientist a colleague of his. And they basically had me come in and put the ridiculous looking little hat on me and they monitored my brain and they did this and actually selected a client for me to read. They picked steve -O. Right. From Jackass. Right. The most, he stapled his <laughs> testicles to his leg. This that, is what they put in front of me. <laughs> and he was a total non believer in the beginning. Right. Dr. Drew selected him because he wanted to pick someone who was not a believer. All I can say is by the end of it, he believed, he cried, and the brain scan, most interestingly, reflected some huge anomalies that they weren't able to explain. So I'm going to be curious to do some follow up testing with that. Wow. It's, it's something that I wanted to do voluntarily, and now I want to continue following up with That's it. That's awesome. Wow. All right, final question. Yep. Tyler, what is your favorite source for celebrity news? Wait, don't tell favorite. me. Oh, oh, I is think it it's too, too bad. bad. I'm sensing yes. a two, and this feels fabulous. I nailed it. I nailed I it. Tyler, oh. thank you very, very much for coming in today. Thank you. Beautiful talking to you. Likewise.